What is up, guys? Welcome to episode two of the Celtic Gamer podcast. As always, I'm here with Ross Mortimer. Wow. And we're here to talk about the latest news, reviews, games, controversies, and topics. And we'll start off with what we've been playing, like always. So, Ross, what have you been playing? Uh, still Minecraft. Hasn't much changed since the last episode, but I've started Metro Last Light, which I'm really enjoying. It was PS Plus perk for February, which is it's a really good game. I know it was, it was actually top of some people I know it was their game of the year last year. So it's not bad. I heard a lot of good things about the previous Metro, but I never... Um, I didn't even know there was a previous Metro until I heard of Metro Last Light, and apparently... Um, it had a lot of hype to live up to, and it it did well, but it wasn't like a game changer. It wasn't any top tens, I don't think, for the year came out. But I'm looking forward to giving it a try when I find some time to play when I'm not dying in Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing that. Um, I got a message from Ian the last day about just being online in GTA for a while, and I decided no, no, I I have too many other games that I've never touched that might be amazing. I just need to give them a chance. And Metro was the first one I started. It's I mean, it's difficult. That game is, is... Fuck me running, dude. That game can be really, really hard. It's just... It doesn't give you any indication of where you're supposed to go. And a very vague description of what you're supposed to do. So a lot of times I just run around and randomly stumble across where I'm supposed to be. And... It's a rare occasion this happens. You know, normally some games we have checkpoints and it doesn't do it frequently enough and that's a complaint people have my voice is starting to go <clears throat> it's a complaint people have where you die and it hasn't checkpointed for like a half an hour and you lose all the progress and it's a pain in the arse Metro does it too often yeah so there's no like good auto save function is there no it it saves every couple of seconds or every time you do something now there's trophies for there's progression trophies for just beating the levels but you also get a silver trophy if you beat the level without setting off any alarms okay. and, and that obviously means not leaving bodies discovered and everything but you can't hide bodies they're just gonna land wherever they fall oh, that's kind of annoying and a couple of times i have turned a corner due to my own stupidity and just walk right into a guy and i have to react and knock him out but then his body just sits there and it'll automatically save because i've taken someone out and then five minutes later, someone will stumble across the body, alarms will go off, and I have to be incredibly quick to pause it and quit. Otherwise, it'll save, and then I'm fucked. But restarting my last checkpoint is after I've knocked that guy out. Okay. So I'm just caught in this loop of getting my mouth fucked by Metro. <laughs> that is a lovely description of how hard that is. Um, no, that sounds like a bit of a pain I remember hearing something like there's a way to unlock the hardest difficulty but it's actually a DLC to unlock the hardest difficulty where you pay five euro or five dollars and you can unlock like extreme mode um, yeah. a, lot of yeah. a lot of people were kind of like you know that's something that should be in the game when you buy it you shouldn't have to buy it. I think it's like the hunter mode or something like that ranger 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 mode yeah I was, I was included in that list of people it's it's content that's on the disc it shouldn't be locked away and especially when it's a difficulty level and all it does is really remove your hood and that kind of stuff which is very limited in the game itself it does a good job of trying to immerse you but if it's it's taking away the aspect of the game that really drags you into it and makes it a really immersive experience and it's limiting that which that shouldn't be a thing mm-hmm I don't know. I'm not, as you know, I'm not really a first-person shooter guy. But like, if I find some time, I'll uh, I'll give it a go. Um, anything else you've been playing? No. Um, I'm at the moment because I have such a big backlog. I'm kind of doing this weird buffet thing with games where I turn it on and play it for like five minutes and then stop and then play something else. Minecraft is the only thing where I actively. I'm going to play Minecraft now for a while. Because yeah. I can just sit back. I don't need to think. I just put on a podcast, listen to that, and my TV's on mute, and I just mine away. Metro is starting to chip away now, because I'm kind of getting into the story. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I don't see myself being properly invested in a game 
for a while yet. I hear um, the enemy AI in Metro are not the smartest as well. That's one of the complaints I heard about it, but that's a small complaint maybe. Yeah, I've heard that too. I haven't run into any game-breaking things yet. Actually, I, have to, I must speak to Noel about it because he's playing it as well. Mm. Um, and he is down and out a first-person shooter. He's amazing at them. But he hates spiders. He's terrified of them. And one of the major enemies in Metro is spiders. You have to f- shine your flashlight at them to make the, they're hurt by light and then they flip over and then you yeah. can go over and stab them in the stomach. But they make that kind of horrible scuttling sound that spiders make when they run around. Yeah, yeah. And I'm facing... I don't know how far he's in the game. He could be... He started to perform. He could be farther ahead of me. But that's all I'm fighting at the moment. And I kind of want to know how he's getting on, <laughs> on with it because he's, he's so scared of spiders. But, um... Yeah, I mean... Sometimes the light just decides not to hurt them, or they still attack you even though they're being hurt, and then they decide to run away from it. There's sometimes where the AI is a little bit iffy, but for the most part, it's it's not bad. All right. Um. Cool. Well, I have been playing more Dark Souls, so that's kind of like my Minecraft, uh, the way the way you are playing all the time. Um. What else did I throw on? I went and I played Don't Starve on the PS4 for a bit. And uh, that was free for PlayStation Plus. And I do like that game. And I do get annoyed that it's a roguelike that, you know, the simplest fuck up and you lose all your progress. And you have to start from the beginning again. Uh, But when you do die, uh, there's an experience bar that goes up. And it kind of determined on how many days you survived and how much you learnt and how much discovered uh, that's all taken into account of how much experience you do so if you level up to level 1 uh, it kind of unlocks more characters for you to play through and each character kind of has a different um, ability in the game like I know the one I got now is Pyromancer and uh, she can just basically create fire out of nowhere which is kind of handy because like, the thing is if you don't create yourself a, a campfire at night when it goes properly dark, you'll die in an instant because uh, enemies just come out of nowhere and kill you. You don't even see them killing you. You just, like, if it goes dark completely and you don't have a light shining, uh, you're dead, simply. So um, you have to be constantly aware of, like, all right, it's morning, so let's go and farm. So you can get, like, cut down trees. You can kill um, butterflies to use for restoring health and um what else yeah it, it, it it's but it's it's really like you have to pay attention because you could be like going around you could be picking up mushrooms you'd be like oh yeah this will restore my health and if you don't inspect them one will say oh no this mushroom is poisonous and you'll take it and you'll die so you have to kind of be constantly like just checking stuff and learning from your mistakes so that when you go back next time you're like oh there's a fucking mushroom i'm not gonna take that well, like, that mushroom might kill you if you eat it, but you could use it on something else. Like, you know, you can pick up a fucking moose poop, and uh, you can use that to throw on your fire to make it burn for longer. So, like, everything is kind of... It has a positive and a negative effect. And also, you can't just go around picking up as much as you want, because your backpack has a limit. So the way I always start off is, like, okay, uh, the first thing you can create the quickest is the axe. So, okay, I'll, I'll go and I'll get the axe and i'll go and i'll just chop down trees and i'll get um wood and all that and then when i have enough wood stored i'll go and i'll look for um mining uh or no not ore but you can mine gold and you can mine rocks and stuff and then you can use that and you can build a science machine it's called and then the science machine allows you to unlock more things to create like you can even create a shaver so that you can shave your guy if he gets a beard uh (laughs) It's like cool little quirky things like that are just it makes you laugh and smile while you're playing, but um, it is just really painful when you do die. You lose all that stuff, you lose all your progress, and you just have to start again from like picking up an axe and grinding out, picking up wood again. But like you, you get faster every time you go back and play because you're like, oh, I remember that. Oh, if I attack that guy, he'll kill me, so I need to have more. Uh, you can create yourself like armor and stuff. Well, it's not really armor. Like you can create yourself a dress. It's kind of... You can create a dress which gives you a bit of armor, but, like, the more you progress, the more stuff you can create, the better armor defense you can create. So, other than Don't Starve, 
I did get... I was really happy when I went down to pick up my post today, but then I wasn't happy when it wouldn't work, and I realized why. But uh, I got the disc, the debug disc for the DLC for Left Behind for Left, The Last of Us, but I have to have a debug PS3 to play it, which I don't, so it's just looking at me right now being like, ha <laughs> Yeah, I saw you tweeted out a picture of that. I yeah. was jealous, but no. Now I'm just now I'm slightly like ha ha ha. <laughs> uh, that's out on the 14th Valentine's Day, which I'll be spending, um, hopefully downloading it and playing. But um, such a yeah. lucky girl, huh? She's a lucky girl. She is. Um, Are you doing uh, it? Actually, it's like really Valentine's Day thing. Um, is Last of Us your entire day? Is that what you're going to do? No, like I honestly to God, I forgot that it was. Um, I only remembered just there when I realized. I remember. I keep saying remember. Um, they said that the DLC is being launched on Valentine's Day, and I just I was watching uh, up at noon uh, last night, and uh, they were interviewing the Mike Drucker, the creator, and the other guy I can't think of his name right now on Naughty Dog, and Ballard, just said, I think. Could be. I don't want to attempt to announce it because a lot of people are like you fucking idiots. This guy, but um, <laughs> uh, he just asked like, oh, why do you hate everyone? Uh, or no, something like that. He says, like, oh, everyone hates you now. I was like, why? Because you've ruined relationships for people. And he just said, I see people sitting down with their significant other to play this game because, you know, a lot of people did. A lot of people play the game. Someone would watch them play. Like, my mother watched me play The Last of Us for a couple of chapters and was just, she was really shocked and awed about how far video games came. Like, the last game she remembers or remembers me playing and watching was Bubsy on the Sega Mega Drive. And, uh, <laughs> I have a I have a fond love for that Bubsy game as well, but um, other than that, I wanted to play my Vita, but my left trigger on my Vita isn't working, so I can't play many games. Um, uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, demo uh, demos actually. I I started up doing a series I'm calling it Demo Play, and basically whatever games or have demos are released on the PSN that week, I'll take like you know maybe a half an hour, depending on how long it takes to play through the demo and put them up for people to check out because a lot of people don't get enough time to play demos but they might have enough time to sit down and watch me playing through demos so I did Dust Force which actually I really really liked I did then I played Ethan Meteor Hunter which you're this rodent that's going around solving puzzles while you're solving puzzles puzzles, you're collecting orbs and uh, there's it's it's actually quite challenging. It doesn't look all that amazing, but um, some of the puzzles I was like actually stuck on for at least four or five minutes. And during each level, you're being timed. So at the end of the level, you kind of get timed on how many times you died and how quickly you solved the puzzle. So it's not a game I'll be running out to buy, but if maybe if it was on sale, I might pick it up. But it's more I think it's more uh, kind of a kid's game. And uh, there was another game I played, and it was a terrible name, and it was a terrible game, and I can't think of the name of it. But um, other than that as well, me and Connor started doing more trial runs. We were playing Cards Against Humanity clone on PC. That's up. That's going up today, I think. And uh, we did Sonic All-Stars Racing as well. Oh, um, that's terrible. Oh, my God. Connor will kill you if he heard you say that. Oh, he, that's he, terrible. It's awful. I don't care if you... Hi, Connor. But I don't... No, it's awful. <laughs> I haven't played... Like, I was watching him play and I was kind of like, ah, oh, this looks okay. Like, uh, the graphics look really nice on PC, I will say that. But, um... Oh, uh, yeah. Just demo plays, trial runs, and... Actually, I tried playing Ace Combat, the beta, and I just realized I I don't really like simulated uh, warship fighting games. And I just turned it off. But, um... Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of them either. I don't mind games where I can get into vehicles and fuck shit up, but then I can get out again. That's, I like Battlefield, mm-hmm. but I don't. if I'm stuck in the plane, I don't like it as much. Despite the fact that if I'm playing Battlefield and I get into a plane, I refuse to get out of it. It's a, it's a very kind of bizarre... It's a, weird, it's a weird thing. I still have not played Battlefield, and I know I should. Ah, <sighs> stick it. That was me taking a sip of water. Um, (laughs) uh, Oh, actually, no. I started playing uh, Hearthstone, the World of Warcraft uh, Heroes of Warcraft game, which I don't know if you heard anything about. 
I know it exists. That's that's kind of where my I've never been into Warcraft, so that's where my knowledge ends. Well, it's it has the lore of World of Warcraft, like all the characters you'd kind of recognize. But um, it's a card, it's a card game, and it's in open beta now, so you can anyone can go and download it. I just said I'd check it out. Um, well, when I was at home on Sunday, I was just like didn't have my PS3, so I was like I'll download something. So I downloaded that. And I, da- I initiated a download to EVE Online because I actually want to try that out because the cool story is last week in EVE Online there was this massive, massive war. Or not really a war, it was just kind of, it happened to happen by accident. Uh, this uh, Federation Galaxy team, I don't remember the names, but uh, they have to pay every every month for uh, hosting or something like that. Uh, or they, were, they had some area in the galaxy and it was all to themselves. And it's a pretty significant high-valued area, but like they had total reign and, do- and dominance over it. But what so, something happened or something went wrong or maybe it was human error, but the money didn't uh, go through and pay. So that area is up for grabs and that initiated a war because uh, a lot of people are trying to fight for that area. And um, I think, I can't remember the exact amount of money, but like it's something like 67 Titans ships were destroyed and that might not sound that significant but each one of these titan ships cost equivalent of $1,500 uh, currency in like dollars in real life to actually build just one and it takes up to 6 weeks I think to build just one in the game because uh, something like they have to build it outside of space in its own habitat where it could be attacked so you have to kind of keep it security monitoring it all the time so like 70 of these were lost in that game so that's 1500 by 70 is like over 100,000 euro or 100,000 dollars in real life it was I don't a, know it was 180,000 180,000 yeah. so uh, yeah, yes. I, I heard about that thing it lasted 22 hours yeah well now how Eve works um it's uh and the ping for every player is the more players there are in an area it slows down time so that you don't have anyone who's lagging and at a disadvantage to everybody else it, it explains it within the game it actually gives it an explanation that makes it make sense within the galaxy so it took 22 hours in game time but there was so many people involved in it that time was crawling through have you seen screenshots of, of the battle no, I actually should. I was just listening to the interview. Um, I was listening to Giant Bomb's uh, Dump Truck podcast, and they have an interview with the loser and the winner of that battle. And um, it just sounds insane, like how many people are involved. It is, at the moment, like, um, it mightn't be the biggest battle fought, but it was the most expensive battle fought. And what the Eve uh, company are doing now is that they're they say that they're going and taking parts from all the ships that were uh, destroyed in that battle, and they're erecting like a monument in some history museum for, like, to represent that this this battle happened. Like you know the way the World War Two, everyone knows this battle happened, and there's monuments everywhere about it. Like it's the same for Eve. It's kind of like it's crazy that a game is that popular that people would kind of appreciate something like that, even though it's a digitally coded thing that's really cool it's like a piece of video game history now that will yeah. last throughout the age like you're gonna have some old thick ass glasses wearing nerdy grandfather sitting on his porch when I was part of that battle <laughs> I was there oh, you do, I've seen some shit man you have no idea what I've seen I've seen it on a 4x4 four four screen it was it was amazing yeah no it's, it is it's, it's kind of cool when you think about it that way um I guess so that brought us kind of on to news I guess so the only other news from the week so far is I know that Titanfall there was uh, leaked footage of a sniper uh, combat in the game and uh, we had it up on our site but then EA went and uh, went to YouTube saying please take that video down and uh, they took it down because they didn't want people seeing the sniper fighting uh, in the game and uh, I did talk to one of our guys uh, that does reviews, and he said that when he did play the beta, that um, the sniping in it, 
it was fine, but it was just a case of like it's so hard to hit people with a sniper rifle because you you see how fast people run in that game, and like they've got jetpacks, so sniping isn't really a viable option in that game. It's probably you have to get really good at it if you want to kind of hit people and kill them. Yeah, like I would generally be a sniper if I'm playing Battlefield or Call of Duty or something. But from what I've seen of that game, like it's all about. It looks so fast paced and it's all parkour and like you said, jetpacks and stuff. You'd never hit anybody. Yeah. Uh, which is why I'm kind of thinking like first, I, I did watch the video but I can't really remember. Like I don't think it, it's the size of a bullet. It seems more like a kind of a wave that comes out of the sniper rifle so that there's more an, an area of hit on the player. Do you know what I mean? Because in fairness, if they're, the players are moving that fast, it's just going to be possible to hit them with like a bullet. So you need a kind of more of an area of effect. So, so it's them. sorry, I haven't seen that. It's 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 a wave. So does it disperse? Does it get wider the farther it is away from you? I can't. I really can't remember. I don't know. I could be completely wrong about that. But I, I would just presume it would be as well. Um, I know people can go and see that footage on DailyMotion dot com. It's like another video streaming website. But uh, EA haven't attacked them yet because. You know, I don't think they have any power to. Daily Motion doesn't take down stuff really. Um, but uh, it looks, I don't know, it's kind of, it does make me a bit annoyed that I won't be able to play that game unless it's on, uh, P- or since it's not coming to PS4. But um, I suppose I will probably get an Xbox One when things get better for it. But at the moment, there's nothing really, like, I don't like Dead Rising because I don't really care about zombie games other than maybe Plants vs. Zombies and The Walking Dead Telltale series but um, and Forza is nice but I'm not really a, a racing car driver kind of game the only game actually uh, is that looks interesting to me is Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare but that is I don't think it's 100% exclusive it could come to PS4 down the line so there really isn't anything that's coming to Xbox One that's exciting me other than like perhaps Titanfall which I'm still skeptical to see how well that game does but I you know it's hard not to see it do well is it going to be like one of those soft exclusive games where it has like only on Playstation on the case but it's also on Steam and Xbox as well I never got that doesn't make Mm. any sense to me yeah like it says it's Xbox exclusive but it's coming to like PC same day yeah see that's yeah, like I used to when I was a kid, and the movie trailers come out, and it was have only in cinemas. Like ah, like I can never get that. What if I don't yeah. see it in the cinema? I'm never going to be able to watch it. Didn't make any sense. I was not a smart child, but that still that didn't make any sense. Hmm. I understand that, but um, yeah. So that's Titanfall, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Super excited. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you. You were kind of on a roll. I'm going to bring it all the way back to Don't Starve. I've I've never played it. I have questions. Butterflies heal you. Is that the only thing that heals you, or is it just something that heals you? Who decided on the medicinal purposes of butterflies? If someone, <laughs> if someone was in hospital, you used to bring them grapes. I still don't know what grapes do to heal you. I've never been able to figure it out. But could I swap them with butterflies? Um, it's not just butterflies, no. But like, it's basically think of real world and think of star or think of like survival tactics. It will heal you, but say you could go and create a trap and put it over um a mole, a mole's uh, hole or a rabbit hole, <laughs> and <laughs> there's rabbits around. There are rabbits around you, but you can't get close to them because as soon as they see you, they run towards the their hole. So uh, you can create like a trap over their hole so that when they run in, the trap falls on them and then you can pick up the rabbit. Now you have choices. You can release them, you can keep them alive in your inventory as a pet, or you can, you know, kill them and skin them. And then when you kill them and skin them, you can eat the raw meat there, but really you want to go and cook it because then it'll heal you even more. But like sometimes in the game you won't have an option. Like I was so into... Uh, mining and everything that I I wasn't paying attention to my fella's health and all I had was berries and butterflies so when my berries were eaten I, he was still hungry so I was like wonder if there's anything else in my inventory because I couldn't go out and um, scavenge well I could if I created myself a torch 
uh, which would have burnt for a little bit, but it would have been too risky to go out with just a torch because I mightn't get back to my uh, campfire. But the only other thing I had was butterflies, and usually what I don't know what you want to be. I don't know what the butterflies are for. I know you can probably craft them with something or create like you could probably create. You could probably add them to like a pot of stew to make it more sweetened for your man, so he likes it more. Because it's always it's also about keeping your guy happy. Like you can keep him fed, and then you have to kind of keep him happy, like keep him sane. Because you know, when you're out in the open world and you're on your own, you kind of you need something to keep you entertained. So you have to make sure he's not going insane. Because when he goes insane, um, you start seeing monsters, but they're not really there. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's happened to me only once though. But it, it it kind of it's freaky because you just like this you think they're chasing you, but then you could stand still and they could run through you. And another fucking thing as well that they have ants in the game, you know, like uh, Lord, Lord of the Rings. Rings, walking, talking trees. Yeah, I was I was there for ages. Like I had a hundred, like um, I don't know about a hundred logs of wood in my inventory, and all of a sudden this ant comes out of the ground, and I was like, what the fuck? And apparently, yeah, if you just like keep. Uh, just chopping down trees like the trees that get pissed off and then like they'll summon their ants that just follow you forever they don't like ever you can't get rid of them until like you use something i don't know what it is but you have to figure it out for yourself there is a way of stopping them from following you but like it's it it's a case of you can either go on forums and find out all the answers or it's like dark souls where you just learn by playing this uh, game sounds awesome it's like a really hardcore version of Minecraft. There's a lot of similarities based on what you're telling me to Minecraft, but it sounds awesome. It's good. It's made by the same guys that did Shank and uh, that made uh, that game. Oh, the Assassin game. I can't think of the full name for it. But um, no, it's it's very good. It's very charming uh, the way it looks. And uh, it looks exactly the same as it did when it was on PC. So there was never... It just, just did a straight port to the PS4 because... PS4 is pretty much like a PC, but it runs really well. Um, I don't think there's any multiplayer options or not. Now I haven't checked, but um, it's good. I like it. We have a, actually we've got a review for it up on the site. I think um, Brant gave it an 8.5. I'm just gonna check that now. Uh, if there was multiplayer in that game, I would just I play it seriously for about 20 minutes, and then my, you know, I just I I need to start messing. Yeah, I get bored too easily. That's why I need another reason I want to take a break from Minecraft because everyone has, you have these stats like for the amount of races you've won and lost and death matches you won and lost and that kind of stuff. Ian, his race stats is it's either even or his he's won one or two more than he's lost. I think I've won about thirteen races and I've lost about three hundred and twenty because I keep stopping at the finish line and turning around and trying to hit other people. Either mm-hmm. run into them or crash into them or something, and I just I get bored, I get distracted, I want to start messing. You can't do it. I if there was a multiplayer, I'd just keep coming along and pissing on your campfire, putting it out. <laughs> or I'd I steal hate. all your butterflies and I'd lasso them together with fishing wire. Can you fish in that game? Um, might be a, a yeah, maybe. It seems like something they would have. There you um, go. Butterflies fishing wire have them all together and then kind of varnish them but only one wing so they're mm. not they're rigid but they can still fly and then I'd go paragliding with them mm. uh, that could be interesting yeah okay. um, other news and it's kind of funny but it's not really remember have you heard of flappy birds <laughs> yes yes I have okay yeah. A little bit, a little bit of news and background in the game. The game has actually been out for a year, but only recently it just blew up out of nowhere. And uh, according to the guy who created it, it's after ruining his life. <laughs> even though he did say that he's made fifty thousand a day off just running an ad on the game. Uh, he's from Vietnam, and uh, he had to take the game down. Or no, he he want he took the game down. And he he got death threats, and now he's getting more death threats to say put the game back up because I want it. And it's also led to people selling their iPhones for like one thousand five hundred, that because they have Flappy Bird on the iPhone. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that on eBay. 
Yeah. Oh my god. I'm just looking here. Uh, the tweet he sent out is, I am sorry, Flappy Bird users. 22 hours from now, I will take Flappy Bird down. I cannot take this anymore. Retweets, 134,716. And favorites, 40,827. I've never seen any game get so many retweets or anything about it. Crazy. I just The internet is such a fucked up... I mean, internet... Bless you. Thanks for listening and visiting the site. But God damn it, you're, you can be stupid. It's like, who's sending a guy who makes a ridiculously basic game based around throwing a bird through Mario pipes, as far as I can understand. And he takes it down, which he's every right to do because he put it up, and death threats. I mean, I just, I don't understand it. Okay, I have to read this out. Uh, in addition to the clones, there is another crazy thing happened. Someone is selling an iPhone which has installed Flappy Birds on eBay at a 650 minimum asking price. And guess what? The price has arrived. 50,100 is the current bid, um, with 47 bids on that. 50. Okay, internet. We're gonna have to sit down. We need to talk. Someone. I know. I want your parents' phone numbers. I want to tell them they failed. As both as parents and as people, I can't. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nuts. Um, that is. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's. I don't know what to make of it. I didn't download Flappy Birds. I just knew I did. It just. The only thing that nearly sold me on it, someone just said, it's like. Dark Souls. I was like, why? Because it's hard. I was like, no. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, he should work in marketing. <laughs> he should. <laughs> um, yeah, so Flappy Bird. Uh, I put up an article on the site for news. I think I just said, like, you have 12 hours to grab Flappy Bird before it flies away forever. Aw. But it won't, don't worry, it won't fly very far. It'll only get about three pipes away and then it'll die. And then your phone will get launched across the room. I did watch, like, you know, gameplay of it. And it is just, like, robbing the pipes directly from Mario games. It just looks identical to it. Yep. So, um, let's see. PlayStation Plus Payday 2, free for members. Uh, Oh, Watch Dogs is delayed on Wii U. But it's apparently going to be coming out between April or June this year on Xbox One X, or Xbox 360 PS3 PS4 and PC so I am can... really looking forward to playing Payday 2 we'll get back to the thing but I am expect a let's play of that um, cool. in a couple of days it's going to be awesome ah cool um, yeah I actually no I don't know if I have it I think I have it maybe um yeah, so Watch Dogs delayed on Wii U, uh, which is better than what the rumor currently was, where people were saying that it's actually not coming to Wii U after they said that it would. Um, because, uh, I don't know, it's just the, the development time for developing on the Wii U is meant to be very difficult for them. So. Ah, let some, you need to let the Wii die. Just let it go. We die together. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, let me see. Uh, Is that going to be our first sponsored T-shirt? <laughs> Celtic we... Gamer, we die together. <laughs> yeah, we can make a whole brave our brave heart speech about it. <laughs> Just we die together in inverted commas, and then beneath it, slightly Scottish accent. Good work. Actually, if people are listening and wondering why our audio sounds different, we do this over Skype. We don't do this in a room together, because if we did, we probably kill each other. Or get drunk. We would get drunk. Mm. Which may yeah. possibly lead to us killing each other. Yeah, this, I mean, it's full of holes. We didn't think that one through. Sure. Um, yeah, let's see. I'm going to have a look on some websites to see what news is breaking today in the gaming industry um, there will be the 
Borderlands 2, which will be coming to the Vita, uh, will get a Vita bundling pack where you can buy your Vita and has Borderlands 2 in the box. Ooh, I like um, that. Yeah, no, no word about when it's coming, but um, it's meant to be this year. I uh, the rumor is March. Um, but I don't know. Seeing as we're so close to March now, we've heard nothing. Usually they would have confirmed it by now, but I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully. Um, I actually I'm not excited to play Borderlands Two on the Vita. Like I have it on PS3, and I do enjoy it. And I know there's a big following for it that probably will go out and buy a Vita just to have it on the go. Um. Which will probably make this the second biggest game to come to the Vita for first-person shooters. Like, I know we had uh, Call of Duty, but that wasn't a very good game. And then we had Killzone Mercenaries, which was a fantastic game, but just Killzone doesn't have a big enough name to push Vita sales. But Borderlands 2, it could be a, could be a good uh, console pusher. It would It would sell me on one. I don't have a Vita, but I would. Borderlands Two seems like the perfect Vita game. It's just pick up and play, and that's what you want for your Vita. Mm-hmm. I don't want to pick it up because I'm stuck on a bus for half an hour and forget where I am in the story and forget what I'm supposed to be doing. It's perfect for just I can pick it up, grind out some levels for a while, and then start again when I get home. That's perfect. Yeah. Uh, other things that was released today and yesterday I did watch the trailer for remember they announced a Heavenly Sword game or no a Heavenly Sword movie yeah uh, they released a trailer for it yesterday and I will say to people just go watch it it's not very impressive I don't really like the music in the background um, I don't know I'm. it doesn't it's not on the scale of when they launched the Ratchet and Clank movie trailer that was really well done but this one as well, the Sly Cooper movie trailer wasn't that great either, so... I don't know, it could be a case of the trailers mightn't look that great, but the movie could turn us around and, you know, actually come out and be good. But, um, I don't know, it doesn't look all that special. Your friend might be able to get you a job in marketing. That was amazing. Yeah. Speaking of movies, I went to see Robocop last night. Oh, did you? Remake, I did. Uh, what do you think? Eh... Uh... Yeah. yeah, I'm hearing that a lot. It was okay. I prefer the I prefer the original. I do. Um, mm. but it was okay. It was worth a watch. I'm glad I went to see it. I'll talk about it a little bit more in depth if it comes up again in a couple of days. It's only been out now for like four days, but yeah, uh, I went to see the Lego Movie. I really want to see that. I haven't got a chance yet. Last uh, night was a choice between Lego or Robocop, so I went to Robocop. Ah, uh, you made the wrong decision. I'm going to get to see both, so it's not. It doesn't really matter. I might actually go to Lego today. Ah, uh, yeah, do it. It is awesome. Fuck it, it I'm going to Lego today. No, oh, right, that was easy. That's my day planned. If I had the day off, I'd go see that movie again. It is awesome. Oh, yeah. It's a lot better and a lot more in depth than you think it could be or than it should be. But um, no, it's very, very good. Uh, you'll want to go and play Minecraft afterwards. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I did see a post on Reddit. Um, somebody was impressed about their attention to detail with the animation um, where the police officers in the fire guns at some point in the movie yeah. And, yeah. Um, the way they did the muzzle flash was to take an actual piece of Lego It's um, I think it's flowers and it has a base with three stems coming off it so they used that as the muzzle flash for the bullets so they used a, an actual Lego piece to do that it's just it's really really clever they could have just animated in anything but they took a real actual physical piece which is really really cool and yes. apart from reddit i would never ever know that but it's a really cool detail i i've heard so much about reddit but i've yet to take the time to get to know it oh you'll get lost yeah that's what everyone says i'm just like i don't have enough time to get lost in something else like um but no, it's good. And the the Lego Movie game is coming out. I don't know. Is it today or is it this week? But um, re- reviews for that on Metacritic uh, look quite positive. Um, I was kind of skeptical about it because there hasn't been much uh, feature or no, not features, but previews on it at all. It just seemed to like pop up as well to say, oh, the game is also accompanying accompanying it. And um, yeah, so we'll see what that's like. 
And uh, I think it'll do quite well. It has the hype and the momentum of the movie. And most movie tying games are usually pretty bad. But this has the pedigree of the other Lego games, which do really, really well. Like, carrying it along as well. So you're going to have every kid who wants to see the movie that's going to get it, or the parent's going to get it for them. And everybody who's bought all the like Lego Star Wars and Lego Batman and all those ones, they're going to get it as well. It's I think it'll do quite well. Mm-hmm. You know, the Lego games have stepped it up a lot. They are, they are good. I didn't... I didn't go mad for the Marvel one I can see why people really like it because it has nearly every iconic Marvel character in that game Um, but I will go back and give it another try on PS4 it's just that there was so many games to play that um, I just didn't go back to it Outlast is one that is on me and Connor's radar to do for like a a trial run Um, I just have to you can't record PS4 footage with my Elgato but if I get a HDMI splitter which you can get on Amazon uh, you can buy that and then hook it up to it and then you'll be allowed to live stream or just capture video from PS4 which is great because I thought that um, they had gone the extra mile to stop people from doing that yeah they they, they have promised to bring it in in a patch um, to remove the HDCP so you can actually capture directly from it like you can with a PS3 Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah at the moment for PS4 it is just you have to live stream to Twitch and record that um, which isn't great it's not a deal and it also messes with your I mean the more times you put the video through a different program the worse it looks it becomes more muddy and pixelated yeah I find uh, if people are wondering what I use for kind of making Elgato videos uh, smaller and keep the same quality there's a free um, there's a free thing called a handbrake and it's amazing i don't know if it works with songs and stuff i'm going to try uh, editing the podcast on it afterwards to see if i can make the file even smaller but any file i put through that i could put a six gigabyte file through and it could make it a 500 megabyte file and i and i thought like oh i'm going to lose a lot of the quality from this and uh, no it's been exactly the same it's a very good file compressor so check it out handbrake I use um, DMG Instr- Extractor. I, I I got that for my fir- when I did the blind let's play of Dead Space Three, and mm-hmm. the first episode was an hour and twenty minutes long. Yeah, and I thought, like, oh, this this is going to take forever. So I just ran through that and it compressed it down to like a tiny, tiny file size. It's awesome. Yeah, it's good because, uh, well, I'm lucky enough here to have fairly quick YouTube upload speed, but I know a lot of people don't. Um, so yeah if you're ever if you want to do this whole video thing you do want to compress your file down and try and keep it at the same quality that it has originally so Handbrake kind of is a good free software that lets you do that and uh, we're not being sponsored to say that at all we're not sponsored at all but if you'd like to sponsor us you can contact me on Twitter or on contact us at CelticGamer.com is our contact email yes we got a contact email that says Celtic Gamer just because we're awesome uh, well, I think we're awesome. Do you think we're awesome, Ross? I think. Uh, I think. I, I go in and out. Yeah. I bet you do. <laughs> and these are the what? jokes. Um, Jesus Christ. Alright, yeah. so I have something I want to talk about. Oh, if, do you? if my voice will stop, <clears throat> stop breaking on me. I don't know what the fuck's happening there. Okay, I mentioned. Hurry up, I, I gotta pee. No, I'm going to slow everything right the fuck down now to the point where you have to leave midway through the podcast. And I'm going right, just... to sell it off for some magic internet beans. Do um, an empty bottle anywhere? <laughs> just to mute your microphone <laughs> and wash your hands. Uh, I, at the very beginning, I said I was doing that kind of buffet thing with games where I jump in and I play something for a bit. Gamer fatigue. And this is mainly because of digital downloads, I find. When you were a kid and you got a game, and it might be the only game you get for the next six months, no matter how bad it was, you played the fuck out of it. And you finished it and you immediately started it again. And even when I got my PS1 and my PS2, and I went out to buy a game, it was a, it was a big deal. I bought a game and I brought it home and... I didn't care what any of my friends wanted to do. Is it, no, I'm staying inside today. I got a new game, and that's all I'm going to do. Now with PS3, not that it's a bad thing, but I have like 
17 games on my hard drive that have never been turned on at all. And I have every opportunity to play them, but I just kind of like, meh, I'll get around to them eventually. I relate 100% to that also. Um, and I'm just thinking, like, is it because it's so easy to get so many games built up in your libraries, or is it a case of when we were young and we were didn't have jobs and stuff, obviously? Um, well, some of us didn't. Um, we just couldn't acquire that many games. But I don't really think that would be it either. Like, um, PlayStation Plus is a great service, but at the same time, it's just, it over it overwhelms you uh, sometimes. Oh like, yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's it is the ultimate first world problem. There's too much good content for me to consume at all. That I mean, it's a ridiculous thing to complain about. But there is times, like we're coming towards the end of this month, say, and I'll be like, when I find out what the perks for next month are, I'm like, oh, I've just finished Metro. I haven't even started Bioshock Infinite yet. Can I just? I would like a month off. Can you just not give me anything for a month and let me play yeah. stuff? I mean, it's a ridiculous thing to complain about, but it is. You know who yes. aren't complaining, I bet? People are on the dole. They have plenty of time. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's the one good thing about being on the dole. There you go, everybody. Don't worry about unemployment rates. Think of all the like, games you get to play. Like, I was sick for two weeks. You don't weeks get to there. play any of them when your electricity gets cut off because you're not paying the bill. Ah, they are. Um... When I was sick for two weeks there back in the summer, I was two weeks off, and I wasn't sick enough that I couldn't play games, and like, I should have given time to games, like different games, but I ended up starting playing Dota 2 and put like 100 hours into that game, and that's a free-to-play game, and it wasn't even part of my backlog, I just heard a lot of people talk about it on Giant Bomb, and I was like, oh, let's check it out, and then ended up spending two weeks on my computer playing that game and got really really good at it but now like I haven't played it since I got my new computer um because I want to get a keyboard and a mouse but I'm still using the trackpad um which I'm just gotten used to at this stage but um oh, I lost my train of thought there but uh yeah no I haven't no I did try and go back to it there a few weeks ago and I was terrible at it I just lost all the like the know-how and how to play and my finger motions weren't as quick as it would have been like back when I first put the hundred hours into it. So yeah, like I, I'm kind of like sacrificing time Well, not sacrificing time, but I'm not putting as my free time that I used to enjoy putting into games as I did years ago. If that makes sense. That's uh, yeah. That's the point I'm trying to make. It's we've lost it as, as games have gotten bigger and better. We've gotten worse at appreciating. Bizarre. True. Like, uh, my housemate, he is a big, avid user of Steam. And when they do sales, he'll buy games they he knows he won't even play, but he just can't resist buying this game for €2 Euro when it was €20 Euro originally. Like, he's got over 400 games, and he says he hasn't even gotten through half of them. <laughs> I did, um... No, that's... it's it, Steam would destroy me if I got it. Because the, the PlayStation... Plus, of course it would, it'd um, burn you up, like, Steam is fairly hot, like. I know, it's ridiculous, unless I could harness the power of it and use it as some sort of jetpack. I would think that we have our new project. There you go, because heat rises, and I need to have it cons- every in the jetpack, which would cause, I'd go up, but then, no, hang on. <laughs> right, I'm going to have to, I'll work on this outside the podcast. Anyway, <clears throat> like, the PlayStation sales... Like, I just see a list of games that I know I'm never going to get to play, but I'm somehow losing money if I don't download them. That's too much of a good deal. Steam would break me. And I was listening to... Uh, it was a Rooster Teeth podcast, and Bernie was saying um, that he's on Steam, and he'd be looking through it, and he'd find a game. Like, ooh, that looks pretty good. I'll download that. And he pays for it, goes to pay for it and it will say you already have this in your library would you like to play it and just, mm, nah nah I won't that's exactly what would happen to me yeah I think the a lot of them big sites they have um, Steam press accounts which give you a, a good number of games free um, but yeah no like same with me like I was looking there on Playstation last week and uh, I had to stop myself because I had the game already and I just wanted to get it digitally like enslaved but it would have came with 
the soundtrack as well which i kind of i wanted to buy and it was like eight euro and i was just like look you you've played it already you're not going to play it again because you have a platinum like or no like i will play it again but like years to come i'll go back and play that game because that's still like top 10 games i've ever played is enslaved odyssey of the west like um so that's kind of why i wanted to buy it and then there was like another game like uh, rainbow moon it was called and I, uh, the name sounds terrible but it's actually <laughs> it sounds yeah, like a sex act <laughs> uh but it's, it's it, up there with donkey punching yeah that's definitely a sex act um <laughs> it uh it's an it's an in-depth rpg and i heard a lot of people talk about it and i think it was like originally it's always 12 euro but then if you want the ps vita and that version it's like 20 euro and they were selling it both versions for like seven euro and i was just like oh yeah i i should get this this is a good deal and then i still haven't but i have part of me is like i will still go back and get it if it's there this week but it's so hard to say no yeah to like a good deal you know yeah, like I said, you you somewhat you feel you convince yourself if you don't buy this, you're losing money somehow because you'll want to buy it down the line and, and it won't be at this price anymore. And it's it's all leading to it's just this avalanche of games coming at you and you get lost in it. And stuff that should not be overlooked by an avid gamer gets completely lost in the mix. Hmm. True. That was a good topic. Hey, anyway, pulled it yeah. out of Mars. Do you know yeah. why? Do you know what started? I was looking at my DVD wall when you were talking to me, and I, I have, I don't think we've talked about it on this podcast. I have about sixteen hundred DVDs in my collection, out of which is about a hundred and fifty that I have never ever watched. And when I'm trying to pick out a DVD to watch at night, I could go, you know what? I've never watched American Gangster. I could probably watch that, but I kind of want to rewatch the Amazing Spider-Man because the second one's coming out soon, and that's what I'd end up watching. American Gangster is an amazing movie. It's see, that's what everyone keeps telling me. Still haven't yeah. watched it. Um, Denzel Washington. Anything with Denzel Washington, I think, is amazing. Nearly. Yeah, he's a, well, he's he, he's, he's always amazing in the movie. The movie might be bad, but he's always like one of the reasons why you want to watch the movie because his performances and stuff. Yeah, I agree with that. I watched Flight uh, recently. I didn't like yeah. the movie, but his performance was amazing. Nice. Um, what movies did I watched there? Oh, I watched Elysium there Sunday night, and I didn't really care for it. I liked it. It's Halo. It's it's Halo. It's one hundred percent Halo. That's why your man that directed it is doing that. I think he's directing the Halo series for the Xbox One, or you know there is a Halo series coming out, and I think he's doing it. Yeah, Neil Blomkamp. He was originally supposed to direct the Halo movie, and that fell through. And then he made District Nine. And then he made Elysium, and now he's back doing Halo again. Yeah, no, it, it the world of Elysium I did love. Like I looked how I loved how the movie looked, but um, just story was kind of poor. And that ending is ripped directly from Blood Diamond. Um, I don't want to say it because I don't want to spoil it. But yeah, I was just like that is one hundred percent Blood Diamond's ending. And, I liked um, it. I, I thought Matt Damon was pretty good in it. Charlton Copley was awesome in it. Wait, the guy, the crazy guy? Yeah, the hitman dude. I didn't like him. No? I thought I, he was class. I thought he'd be one of the reasons why I'd like the movie, but I was I was really disappointed. Because I thought, I thought he'd be like the silent kind of killer kind of guy, but he was a dick. And he was a fucking lunatic. It was amazing. He got his face blown off with a grenade, Mitch. Yeah, that's, that part was just like, I thought... Like that was like, oh, they're killing him off fairly quick, or killing him off before he he kills the other guys, and then I forgot about the whole thing where they could heal all the stuff on Elysium. Yeah, but I really didn't think they could heal a guy's face back when he's dead. Um, and it yeah. proper came off as well. Like that that scene where it showed it quite graphically came out of fucking nowhere. Like it, I I saw that in the cinema, and there was a moment where when because the explosion happens towards the screen so his face gets like kind of whipped back towards you and just blood goes everywhere I remember thinking just Jesus this is 15 that was fucking ridiculous mm. um, but yeah no what are movies that I watch uh, that was it really I think in the past while How, actually update us how's your Sons of Anarchy going Sons of Anarchy is going good 
Um, I don't know what plot points to give away that I can tell you where I am without ruining it for anyone who hasn't watched it yet. I'm, I'm towards the end of season two. Okay. And Gemma has just told people things. I don't even remember. Fuck like, it. I thought I was trying to be, I was being intentionally vague. Uh, no. Yeah, that's, I'm towards the end of season two and I'll, I'll leave it at that just in case anyone listening hasn't watched it yet. Cool. But I'm really liking it. Alright. Um, I'm going to tease, well not really tease, but seeing as we did your topic this week, a uh, topic that I was going to do, but I think it's kind of, we'll do a topic a week and maybe I'll announce, if I know what I'm going to do next week, I might announce it on this podcast so that people that are listening can chime in and say what they want to and if they do they can just email podcast at celticgamer.com with the subject line topic uh, and I'll be able to find that quickly in the emails what I'm going to talk about next week is what I kind of think about this whole early access betas uh, but charging the same price for early access on a beta uh, that you can get in on before the game releases um, and not being allowed to review that game that's in early beta, even though it's the final product, but they're just kind of fixing things up uh, and charging for it. I don't believe that you can charge for a beta. Um, you shouldn't be able to charge for a beta. You should be able to buy the game when it's fully released. And I understand that's like uh, the developers wanting to make a bit of money to fund the game, but at the same time, it's kind of it ruins a lot of the hype for the game for those people that have played the beta because when they play the beta the game will not seem as fresh when they go to play the actual finished product and stuff like that so um, yeah that'll be topic of the week for next week I would presume yeah, yeah I, I was going to chime in there but no we'll leave it to next week yeah we'll, uh, we'll give them something to come back for hey eh, Ross <laughs> <laughs> chomping at the bit to hear our Otiris argue about fucking beta stuff yeah um, alright I'm just going to refresh this page to see if anything else might have came up worth mentioning before we end the podcast um, I'm not forgetting anything am I or uh, no oh, Final, Final Fantasy 13 3 reviews came out and um, yeah it's a pity they're not that well they're not brilliant, but they're not as high as the previous Final Fantasy thirteen games were. So a lot of people are saying that the story just makes no sense and the side stories in the game aren't good enough to kind of represent the characters that were in previous games the way they were represented. One dimensional kind of characters they're being represented as or something like that. Um yeah. I'm kinda of disappointed to hear that because I was kind of hoping that this would be the better of the three games but they say the combat is definitely good but just story not great mm. oh do you know what I watched um, I mean I knew it existed but I didn't really care before I watched some gameplay stuff of UFC no, no. is that coming oh, okay. out is there a new one coming out uh, yeah uh, I watched the trailer for the UFC next gen uh, it's only coming to next gen it's not going to previous consoles, but I, I didn't, I don't care for UFC games, but my god, they do look very, very pretty and realistic. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I had UFC 2010, I think it was, um, and they do, they look, they're very good looking games, but I, it's, it fell into that category of Madden and FIFA and everything. It was, this is just an, an up-res version of last year's. It's exactly the same. I, I, I played it for a little bit got very bored of it and then left it and never touched it again mm-hmm. but the um, um, the game I did look at and I, it's, I'm ridiculously excited about and it pr- it'll probably be the thing that makes me buy a PS4 because Metal Gear 5 depends which one comes out first Metal Gear 5 The Phantom Pain if that comes out first I will buy a PS4 day, like the day that game releases but I probably won't buy one for Ground Zeroes. That's something we could talk about, Ground Zeroes. You do know that's a two-hour to three-hour game for 40 yeah. euro. Yeah, it's a prologue, essentially. I mean, you're paying full retail price for the prologue to a real game. That will, when Phantom Pain releases, I 100% bet that that will be in that game also. 
probably. So I'm not. I'm just probably not going to get Ground Zeroes. But The Witcher, I'm, I, I keep introducing what I'm about to talk about, and then I get distracted talking about something else. The Witcher Three. Yeah. That, that. game looks amazing. <laughs> it it's Skyrim, but third person, but looks amazing. I think I'll like it as well. I'm not a big fan of first person Skyrim at all. Oh my god, that that game is I'm going to be lost in that. I sent out a tweet and I text my mother when GTA five came out that just don't look for me for about three months because I'm not going to exist. I won't answer phone calls or anything. That's gonna happen again with Witcher. And that's, nice. Oh, it looks so good. It does. I'm looking I'm actually looking forward to that game as well. I had the two previous games on uh, Steam, my housemate for Christmas, I got him like a code for Netflix for a month, and he got me those games because they were like five euro for both of them or something on Steam. And I will get around to playing them. It's just um, the only reason why I haven't. Uh, I have to get my controller to work with my MacBook, and I just haven't looked into it properly yet. But um, when I do and I have that working, I'll check them out because I hear they're very, 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 very good. So. But, um, yeah, so I think that's all the news and topics uh, for this week. Um, what's worth mentioning? Uh, the reviews that are going up this week today, the review for Loadout is going up. Um, Jeremy Lavelle gave it uh, an 8 out of 10. And uh, he says it's a very good game, free to play. People can check it out for free. And if they like the game a lot, they can you know buy costumes to edit the appearance of their characters um, there will be a trial run going up today I don't know which one it will be probably maybe Cards Against Humanity and um, what else uh, a couple of other things throughout the week will be going up more reviews don't want to say what the review scores will be because you know by the time this goes up they won't be out so check back to the site to check out them be sure to follow us on Twitter um, Celtic Gamer is at Celtic Gamer IRL, um, I'm at Alpha Prince. Ross is at Muffin uh, R- Muffin Ross. No, yeah, Muffin Ross. At Muffin Ross. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to send us an email to at Celtic Game. No, podcast at CelticGamer dot com, and you can also submit questions through our Facebook page where we're uh, Facebook slash Celtic Gamer Network. You can find us over there, so like the page and stuff. And also to check up our on our trial runs and let's plays, you can check it out on YouTube. Um, I uh, give me one second, I'll get the proper. Yeah, it's uh, YouTube slash Celtic Gamer Media on YouTube, and all those links are on the homepage of the site on the featured slide bar, so you can find them all there. Or if you want to type them all out, you can. You know, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's everything. So. Uh, thank you, Ross, for taking the time to do this podcast. Thank you. And I apologize to everyone listening. In the past five minutes, my next-door neighbor started drilling stuff. I've I've done, I've done lowered down my microphone input, so I, I hopefully you won't be able to pick it up, but I'm sorry. If you do, I, fuck all I can do about it. Uh, if it's bad, I can just uh, mute it completely and then make it reappear at this point. But um, that's editing, so we don't need to tell people about that. But... um. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll chat to you for episode three, hopefully next week. Bye, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what that was. I don't know where that voice came from. I don't know either. I was Um, was like I was signing off on a Blue Peter show. I don't know what that did. Did a robot just walk in and interfere with you? Oh, it was one of those things where I knew it wasn't funny and I knew I shouldn't laugh. Because we're trying to sign off, but I just something I, I, my body found something in it to, to giggle at. It was like being uh, molested by a clown. <laughs> That's our intro sketch, then. Uh, yeah, so thanks for listening, guys. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Did you just burp? <laughs> no, I started laughing again. <laughs>